All right, everybody, this is going to be the last part of this chapter. We're going to be doing some advanced problems. And uh, hopefully, you guys will be able to do this on your own and just be able to check with me. But let's get started into this. All right, so two satellites orbit Earth. Satellite 1 has a mass of m. And satellite 2 has a mass of 2m, as shown in the diagram. The Earth has a mass of m e, m sub e, and the radius r sub e. The two satellites orbit at a distance 2 r e, r sub e, from the center of Earth. The satellites initially move with the same orbital speed v initial, but in opposite directions. Calculate the orbital speed v initial of the satellite in terms of g, m sub e, and r sub e. Uh, part b, assume that the satellites collide head on and stick together in terms of v initial. Find the speed v after the collision. And the last part C, calculate the total mechanical energy of the system immediately after the collision in terms of G, lowercase m, capital M sub e, and R uh, sub e. Okay, mouthful. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Calculate the orbital speed of the initial. So one thing we should know is if it's orbiting like this, it doesn't matter what the mass of the satellites are. They're both going to have the same velocity, okay? It doesn't matter what the mass is that's orbiting it, orbiting the planet. The, the planet that it's orbiting matters, but not what the, uh, the object that's uh, orbiting the planet. I hope that made sense. So they're both going to be the same thing. Um, and we should know when we're doing orbits, we're going to be using Newton's laws. We're not going to be doing energy because the height is not changing or anything like that. So what we should have is we should have the force of gravity is equal to G. I'm going to say the mass of one satellite times the capital ME, the mass of the Earth divided by how far they are. So in this case, the satellites are RE, 2RE squared away. Um, since we're trying to find the velocity here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this force of gravity to be force centripetal. So I'm going to say the mass of the satellite is going to be uh, times the velocity squared of the satellite times the RE or 2RE from the satellite. And this is why the mass doesn't matter that's orbiting the planet. Because whatever the mass is, it just cancels out. So whether it's m or 2m or 500 or 2, it's going to cancel out so it doesn't matter. We see that one of the radiuses cancels out. So we can kind of ignore that squared. And now we can find this initial velocity. This v initial is going to be equal to the square root of g uh, m e over 2 r e. Okay. And this is the velocity that it is going around the planet with. Now, part B. Part B says, assume that the satellites collide head on and stick together in terms of V initial, find the speed V after the collision. Okay, so whenever you hear head on, you hear collision, you should be thinking about momentum. Okay, so you should be thinking about momentum. And we're trying to find the speed of it after the momentum. We're not trying to find the angular speed or how it's rotating. We're just trying to find what the speed is when they when they hit each other. So we're just going to do plain old momentum. Momentum initial equals momentum final. At the very beginning, we have this two mass satellite going with a certain velocity, which we found, which is uh, equal to square root of g m e divided by two r e. And then we have the other satellite that's going in the exact opposite direction. Uh, and But we know that one has a mass of just m. It, so it doesn't matter which one you're calling negative. At, le at least one of them has to be going negative, though, because it's in opposite directions. Especially when we're dealing with space, direction becomes very interesting. Our g, mass of Earth, divided by 2 radius e. And then we know when they collide and they stick together, that means that both of these masses are going to stick together. Uh, and I'm just going to simplify that to be 3m. Okay, 2m plus m is 3m. And we're looking for that final velocity when they hit. Okay, so let's try to simplify this. First off, uh, we can just, uh, we could add, I forget what they call this, like terms. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be equal to m square root of g mass of Earth divided by 2RE. Uh, and then we could divide this whole thing by 3M. This will give us VF. This cancels out. 
this cancels out, then we could maybe simplify this a little bit more, but this is how it should look like, okay? So this will be our answer here. Okay, so now let's look at part uh, part C. So part C here, oh, let me, uh, maybe I'll clean this up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Okay, part C says, calculate the total mechanical energy of the system immediately after the collision in terms of G, M, M, E, and R, E. Okay, so let me just, let me copy this down over here. V final is equal to square root of G, M, E over 2, R, E. Divide all this by 3. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of erase everything and we'll let you all try to do this energy thing. Okay, so we're trying to find the total energy after this collision happens and just being able to try to calculate that as best we can. So when we're looking at the total mechanical energy, we're gonna think about the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Okay, so the total energy, we're gonna think about potential energy and, and kinetic energy. So what we have is we have the gravitational potential energy, uh, which we should know is gonna be G, mass of satellites together, mass of Earth, divided by how far they are, plus one half how fast these satellites are going. So mass times satellites, v squared. So let's see if we could figure this out. Uh, the mechanical energy is going to be equal to g, which is, oh, and this is going to be, sorry, this should be negative. Negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the satellites um, which we don't know what they are, but we know that they're, when they combine and stick together, they're going to have a three times the mass of the satellites. Mass of the Earth, which is capital M-E, divided by how far they are, which is 2-R-E, plus uh, one half, three times the mass of the satellites, because they're combined, and then this V final squared. So what we get is, um, I guess we could kind of simplify this because this becomes squared. So we can have this as G M E divided by, and I'm going to bring this, this squares to nine. So it's going to be 18 R E. Okay. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, we can definitely simplify this a little bit more, but this is our final answer right here. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't spend too much time simplifying on the exam because you don't really, uh, the points don't really matter at too much, unless sometimes they do, but it'll only be like worth like one point. Okay, let's look at the next example. A satellite is placed into a circular orbit around Mars, which has a mass of 6.4 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms and a radius of 3.4 times 10 to the six meters. Derive an expression for the orbital speed in terms of G, M, and capital R. So this is very similar to um, what we just did. And let's see. So let's do part A. So force of gravity is equal to G, mass of a satellite. Uh, do they even give us mass? I guess they don't even want us to use mass of satellite. Mass of Mars, which is capital M, divided by R squared. Let's again change this force of gravity into be the mass of the satellite, V squared divided by R. So then this mass of satellite cancels out. One of the R's cancel out. And then we could derive the expression again, V is G, capital M divided by R, and then the square root of this. Okay. Hopefully you guys are able to just do that very quickly now. And now it says derive an expression for the orbital period in terms of G, M, R, and R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here and I'm going to change this velocity squared to be 2 pi R over T and square root all of that. I'm going to do for B, 4 pi squared R squared divided by T squared is equal to G capital M over R. So I'm going to isolate for this T. So I'm going to have 4 pi squared r cubed, because I'm going to bring this cube down, uh, up, this r up, and then gm I'm going to bring down. And this is equal to t squared, but then I'm going to square root all of this. Then we get our answer for t. 
Now, part C says, what is the orbital period of the satellite can be, oh, sorry, the orbital period of the satellite can be synchronized with Mars's rotation, uh, whose period is 24.6 hours. Determine the numerical value of the required orbital radius for this to occur. Okay, so this is interesting. The first thing that I want to do, I'm going to be using this equation I found in B, but let me first find what the period is in seconds. So if this is 24.6 years, multiply this by 365 uh, days, 24 hours, 60 minutes, and 60 seconds to get an answer in seconds. So let's see. 24.6 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And then what we get is we get, I'm going to put this as 7.76 at times 10 to the eighth seconds, okay? And now that I know that, I'm gonna plug that in here. So I'm gonna say 7.76 times 10 to the power of eight is equal to the square root of uh, four pi squared, r cubed, which we're looking for, divided by g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, the mass of Mars, which is given, 6.4 times 10 to the power of 23. And now this just becomes uh, a big algebra problem. So I'm going to square this so that I could get rid of this square root. And then give me a second as I go through all this algebra. <laughs> 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. 6.4 times 10 to the power of 23. Divide by 4, divide by pi squared. And then I'm going to put all this to the power of 1 third so I can get rid of the cube. Then I have the radius, uh, what is it, the orbital radius, right? Uh, doo -doo, the numeric value for the orbital radius. Okay, so then I get the radius as equal to 8, 6, 6, 5, 8, 2, 3, 3, 7, 5. Okay. And now lastly, let's look at part, uh, part D for this. So part D says, determine the numerical value for, of the escape speed from the surface of Mars. So let's look at that, part D. So now we're looking for the escape speed. Remember when we're dealing with the escape speed, we're changing uh, the height. So that means we should be using energy, okay? Um, the rocket or whatever is going from one height to another height. And hopefully we're familiar by now how to use the equation. We're going to look at the energy at the beginning is equal to the energy at the end. And we should know by now that all the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy it has at the beginning, it's going to infinity, so gravitational potential energy is zero. It's going to infinity where it slows to a stop, so kinetic energy is going to be zero. And now let's uh, calculate all of this. This is going to be equal to negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 mass of the satellite, which is not given, mass of the Mars, which is 6.4 times 10 to the 23, divided by how far they are from the surface. So that's going to be 3.4 times 10 to the 6, uh, plus 1 half mass of the satellite, uh, velocity escape squared. And this all equals zero. So now let's find what the velocity escape is. What I want to do is I want to bring this negative to the other side. And uh, let's see what we can do with all of this. Um, then the mass of the satellite cancels out, so we can kind of ignore that. So I'm going to do 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 6.4 times 10 to the power of 23 divided by 3.4 times 10 to the power of 6 times 2 square root. And we should get around... 5,011 meters per second. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this chapter. I hope all that made sense. Thanks for watching. And we have only one more chapter to go for this AP Physics C. I'll see you with simple harmonic motion next time.